and the atmosphere has already been set. If you were paying any attention, and if your heart was open, the atmosphere has already been set. But I just want to know, is there anybody else out there that would acknowledge that he alone is God? Are we thankful for the things that he's doing? Are we grateful for how he's bringing us through this dark time? Are we willing to serve him because he said, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? So is there anybody else out there that really feels like God is the one and only creator of all things. Is he keeping you in the pandemic? Is he making a way for you when your job is shut down? Is God your provider and the sustainer of your health and your life? Ah, oh, see, we got a couple people that know the Lord. But that's okay. We're going to move on because the word is, is, is fresh and God has a word for us today. And I'm so grateful just to see my brothers and sisters who I haven't seen for months. Some of you I haven't seen in months. And you know what? I miss y'all. <laughs> I thank God for the opportunity for us to come together even on the outside. Thanking him for being in our presence. So let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for your provisions. We thank you for keeping us even in the midst of death, Lord. You have sheltered our houses. You've kept our kids. Lord, you have been our provider. You have touched the hearts of those that have provided stimulus money for us. Lord, you have made a way out of no way. When we were up against it, Lord, you stepped in and you provided, Lord. And we thank you for that. We thank you for keeping us sane while we were shut down in houses together, Lord. We thank you for providing love in situations where we were struggling, Heavenly Father. We thank you for regulating our blood pressure when we were getting on each other's last nerve. Lord, we thank you for your love and your understanding. What a great and awesome God we serve. And we come right now asking you to speak to our hearts, Lord. Lord, we're not out here for no shape, form, or fashion. We're not out here trying to put on no show. Lord, we are here wanting to hear a word from you. And it's extraordinary because we're outside, so we're asking you to do something extraordinary. Would you focus our hearts and minds, Lord? Will you cause us to be in such a frame that the, the world will pass by in quietness as we sit and listen to you speak to our hearts? And then, Lord, let the words of my mouth be only from you. Let me only say the things that you have inspired, Lord, and let it take root in the hearts of all those in our presence and those that may hear or see this through some media stream. We thank you for the privilege to serve you and Lord we look with expectation for what you're going to say in this place. Uh, the grass wither, the, 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 word, the, the flower will fade, but we know that your word will last forever. We trust in you Lord and we need a word from you right now. We thank you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. If you have a Bible or media or whatever. Yes. We're coming out this morning, we're coming out of Luke 13, and we're looking at verses 1 through 9. Again, the text is coming from Luke 13, verses 1 through 9. And uh, the, if I had a topic, it would be the importance of bearing fruit in a dark time. Again, the importance of bearing fruit in a dark time. Okay, so uh, the Word of God, and I'll be reading from New American Standard. You, I trust that you'll be reading from your own translation. But these are the words of the Lord as recorded by Luke. He says, At that time, some of, the, uh, of, of those present told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. And to this he replied, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this fate? Verse 3 says, No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Verse 4 says, Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Shalom collapsed on them. Do you think that they were more sinful than all the others living in Jerusalem? Well. Verse five says, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you too all will perish. 
verse 6 says, And then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree that was planted in a vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the keeper of the vineyard, Look, for the past three years I have come to search for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Therefore, cut it down. Verse 9 says, Why shall it use up the soil? But then verse 8 says, Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone again this year until I dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. But if not, you can cut it down. Again, I just want to talk about the importance of bearing fruit in a dark time. There's unquestionable, there's, there's without question, we're living in some of the darkest times in our history. Okay? Not only there's like, what, more than a hundred and some thousand people have died from an unseen disease. And then in the midst of it, we've had come to the forefront things that we have been suffering as a people throughout our entire life. I mean, for me, the whole idea of abuse and all of that has been a part of my entire life as a black man in America. And I've never really understood it. I've always been confused by it because I love the principles upon which our country was founded. Yeah, yeah. The ideas which the forefathers had when they generated and created America really inspire me every day to be the best person that I could be, not only for myself, but for my family. But, and yet, because of the social construct in which we live, and that's a big old term, but it just means that the reality of life of a black man in America, is different from what it would appear to be. It causes a situation for conflict and anguish. And when we see stuff like now, it was different when I was growing up, when black kids were disappearing and men and women were disappearing and you never really knew what happened to them. But now when you see it on national TV, somebody being lynched without a rope, when you see somebody being put to death in 8 minutes and 46 seconds on national TV, nonchalantly as if nothing, as if less than killing a dog, it speaks to a decay in our whole moral state. And yet, we, it's nothing new. Because when we look at the text, this text right here speaks to a moment even in the life of Jesus where there was social discord and where there were actions that led to the death of people that were protesting against a system that was unfair and that they didn't believe in. But when I look at it, I look at Jesus taking it as an opportunity to cause the persons that are telling him about the situation to examine their own hearts. Right. See, because here's the deal. Whether we would acknowledge it or not, there's a lot of foolishness going on and this is the perfect time for dialogue to go on. But it's not only just dialogue across the races, but it's time for some serious conversation between us as black people and as believers in Christ Jesus. Okay, because see, the underlying problem is not race. The underlying problem is not really our social standards. The underlying problem, according to God, is sin. Okay? I, I don't care how you want to shape it, how you want to color it. Really, the underlying problem in America today is we have fallen prey to the lies of the enemy. When, when, I, when I look at people trying to rationalize the behavior of the police murdering somebody in broad daylight, and then they were mentioning things about like the person's background, which, you know, maybe it was shit. You know, maybe it's true that possibly they did have meth or some other drugs in their system. But what does that have to do with you killing them 
church. For that. So the fact that we are upset and the fact that we as a community are taking this opportunity to rise up is very important. It's a crucial moment in America. And yet, as believers in Jesus Christ, we have a responsibility to demonstrate and reflect Christ in everything that we do. One of the principles that we stand on at this church is that we do all as unto God. Yes, sir. You understand? And so that's going to shape our response. Yes. That's going to shape how I talk. That's going to shape the things that I glorify. That's going to shape the places that I allow myself to go. Right. You understand? That's going to shape how I really respond when wickedness comes at my house. And it could. You know, I mean, because like when we look at this in this passage, let me go back to the text. The first thing that Jesus talks about in verse one, he says that at that time, some of them present told Jesus about the Galileans who Pilate had mixed their, whose, whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. During the time when the Jews had come together to celebrate God, that instance had been a situation where those that were wanting to uprise against the political structure at that time, they tried to take arms and Pilate went in and crushed it. And not only did he crush it, he did it in such a way that he didn't even care or had no respect for the religious holiday, but he did it anyway to protect the honor of Rome. Okay? But Jesus said, and he asked them the question, he took that moment to ask them, do you think that all of those that died, those Galileans, that they were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this faith? Now, he's moving towards something. See, we may not want to acknowledge it, but there is a truth that all suffering and death is a result of sin. Yeah. Now, before, before somebody take this to the left, let me say this in a different way. All sin has consequences. And even though for the people that are suffering with corona or the people that are dying, we may not be able to trace that death directly back to their actions, yet the Bible says that we are all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And God would not allow, as a matter of fact, that, that, that iniquity may have been, I may have been a victim of somebody else's iniquity. Okay, it may not be directly linked to something that I did. Come on now. But I still am a sinner. Right. And because of that, the wages of sin is death. Right. That's what God said. Now, we live in a time where we don't want to hear that. We don't want to think about sin like that. We'll call it a disorder. We'll call it a problem. We'll say, you know, that's just how I am. And yet we'll continue to walk in rebellion against God who owns and created all things. Well, and he is the standard bearer. Right. Not only as the standard bearer, he is the ultimate judge. Yes, sir. So when he moves, he always moves justly. Come on now. And he does everything decent and in order, and we'll all understand it better by and by. God knows exactly what he's doing. And even though this thing at this moment is so mind-blowing, when you list all of the number of people that have died violently at the hands of the police, it's staggering. Yeah. But you know what? The number of black people that got killed by black people during the same period of time is even bigger than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we get upset when, and rightfully so, when those in authority who have been charged and have accepted the, the position of protect and serve now are not protecting and serving, but they're becoming a part of the problem. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. The problem is the same for them that's for us. Yes, sir. See, the Bible says that God himself is the one that established authority. Yes, sir. And he did it with a direct purpose and plan. The problem is the people that are functioning in those roles are just like you and me. Yeah. And they got a sin problem just like we do. Now, you know what? We, 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 we get in arms when we see the police officer on this brother's neck. Right. But given the opportunity for people that we don't like, we get on their neck too. Amen. 
Maybe not physically, yeah. but if you could do some dirt to them, yeah. we do some dirt to them. Yeah, right. See, and that's what Jesus meant when he said that we need to examine our own hearts to make sure that the same sin that we're now protesting openly hasn't creeped into our hearts. See, if you hate white people, you're part of the problem. part of the problem. If you're unwilling to listen and understand the circumstances involved in each situation and judge it as such, instead you want to blanket rule everything, you're part of the problem. And God wants to change that. Okay? See, and but see, then, okay, so you got this one dynamic with, with the police brutality and all of that. And it's in the text. And then you got another situation where there was a natural calamity that was unexplainable. And to the Jewish people mind, why would God select these 18 people to be the one that the building fall fell on on that day? Right. They must have seen it. You know, they had done something secretly that we may didn't know, but they weren't right with God. That yeah. was the thinking at that time. Yeah. So Jesus asked the question to them, do you think that these 18 people upon whom the building fell on and they were crushed in this disaster, do you think that they were more sinful than you? Hello. The hundred and some thousand people in America that died from corona, do you think that they were more sinful than you? Hello. Yesterday, I attended a memorial for the death of my brother-in-law who died from complications from corona. It touches us. Yes, sir. So when I see us out there running and protesting and doing whatever without protecting ourselves, to me, that's foolishness. Preach, preacher. And, and one of the things that I've been praying for that when we came out of this, that God would give us wisdom to walk back into this reopening in such a way that would honor him and that we would be blessed and well kept. And, and, and the problem is, is the Bible talks about that the wicked man comes to stir up confusion. Yes, sir. See, so at this moment now, the enemy has seized and he has taken upon a strategy that makes us say, forget Corona, we need to get with the police. Yep. You know, we, we, but, but you know what? The reality is both things are important. But it's an opportunity for us as individuals to examine ourselves before the Lord. You know what you've been doing while you've been shut up at your house. Yeah. You know if you've been worshiping and fellowshipping with God. John said that if we walk in darkness and say that we fellowship with him, we lie and we don't practice the truth. Now, uh, the text, I mean, to think about it now. One of the biggest hindrances in being able to bear fruit in any season is unconfessed sin in your life. Jesus said, I am the vine, yes, you are the branches. Please. If you abide in me, you will bear not only fruit, but much fruit. But he also said that if you walk in darkness, we ain't even in fellowship. Now I can lie to myself and I can lie to you and say, me and God, we could. Yeah. Jesus is my homie. You know, I hear people say all that kind of stuff, and they, clearly they, I'm thinking, you don't know the Jesus of the Bible, you wouldn't be calling him your homie. Right. You know, he, he's way beyond that. That's right. You know, he's holy. Oh, he yeah. is God. You know, and although he honors us by bringing himself down to our level, we should never try to lower God down on, on, on a human level. Amen. You know, I mean, we really should because his character is so beyond us. Jesus said the prince of this world is judged, but he has nothing in me. None of us can make that statement. Everybody out here got something that the devil got a whole card on you about. There's something in your past or your present or your future that you know you want to do that's contrary to what God has said. Yes. And you know what? Those things prevent us or hinder us in our growth and our development in bearing fruit. Yes, now, you know what? 
I, I, I was thinking all week because I've been kind of torn this week. Because this week for myself, I was looking at Samson, a, a, a man of superhuman strength, according to the Bible, the strongest man that ever lived. And then yet he was called by God, chosen by God for a specific purpose, right? And yet his appetite was such that he had to walk through a whole bunch of stuff to get to the place where God wanted him to be. He still did everything that God said he was going to do. Right. And you know how I know? The Bible said, the last verse in that, in that section says that in death, Samson right. killed more people in death than he did in life. Right. In his disobedience, in his walking away from God, God still shaped that and moved that and orchestrated that to where God could use that for his glory. So for you and for me, if I think I'm too strong, if I think I'm too smart, if I'm going to do my own thing, God can still shape that and move that and bring that to a place where he can use it for his glory. Yes, That's what he do. And yet, he still gives us opportunity out of respect and love for all of the blessings that he's given us yes. to honor him by doing what he asked us to do. Yes, sir. See, so then the, the, the last part of this, when we look at it, the second section of that, there comes a situation and Jesus starts speaking to them in a parable. And he says to them, he says, uh, say? he, says uh, he says, then Jesus told them this parable. A man had a fig tree uh, that was planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, and he did not find it. You know what? Most of us, if we're honest, we think bearing fruit for God is optional. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, we've been, we've been going through this whole thing about figuring out what our, uh, allowing God to show us what our spiritual gifts are, and... And, and nurturing and developing and becoming a disciple so that we can bear fruit for God. And many of us have schedules that don't allow us to do that. Matter of fact, really, if we're honest, we have priorities that supersede the calling of God in that area. And we figure he'll understand. And he does. He understands that you love some things more than you love him. I know. It's tight, but it's right. So the problem is, is that there is a, what's not important to us is ultimately important to God. When you look at the life of Jesus, do you realize, and we should always use the life of Jesus as an example and a landmark for us. When Jesus walked the earth, there was only two overt things that Jesus did in his earthly walk. One is when he whooped them out of the temple because they was degrading his father's house, making it a place of exchange. The other was when he, he smoked that fig tree when he was walking in because he thought there was going to be fruit on that tree because it was in perfect bloom, but when he went up there to get some fruit, there was none. He killed that tree. Yeah. That's a lesson in that. Yeah. We can fake being in God, right. but you can't buy fruit for Jesus. Right. The, the fruit that the Holy Spirit manufactures in our lives, we, we, can't, we can't fake that. Only God can do that. See, and, and, and the problem is, is that we'll buy into this stuff not thinking about the consequences because we're, if we're honest, we're living for right now. You know, I got my pleasure thing. I heard pastor say earlier that when we talk about living in sin, we'll say, I got needs, I got to do what I got to do. People in my family doing it too. Know that that's not God's way. But sin is in our hearts. And, and the problem is, is that God has given us gifts. He's given us this opportunity. He's given us his word. He's given us gifted individuals to exegete the word of God, meaning just break it down in the lowest terms so we can understand it, so that we can understand better what God wants to do with us. Wanting us to embrace that and to, to take that on and to, to, to walk that out so that people that don't know God will see the change in you and want to know more about the God that you serve. See, but that's, a, that's almost like that Mission Impossible thing in our mind where it says if you choose to accept this mission. But don't you know that the calling of God was out with, without repentance? If, and, and that's why some of us haven't died because our work isn't done. You don't want to meet God with your work undone. You really don't. You know, right now it seems cool. You know, I can do what I want to do because I ain't getting slapped down. You know, God ain't striking folks down like Ananias and Sapphira when, you know, like when he lied in church. 
he didn't just kill him right there. He ain't doing that right now, it don't seem like. And because of that, we think, we, we presume on God's grace to where we really would think that we could just do what we want and God's just going to be cool with that. But I stop by to tell you today that that's not cool with God. There is a responsibility for everybody under the sound of my voice that has been empowered with the Holy Spirit, living inside of you, to live your life in such a way that you can give guidance to those that don't even know God. You know, there was a, there was a thing on Sports Center where my boy, uh, uh, Steve, Steve Van Pell, he always do every night, the, the funniest thing I saw. Uh, well, I think he said the best thing I saw today. I gotta tell you about the funniest thing I saw this week, right? Okay, I'm on my way to work. I stop by this convenience store over on the Missouri side. And when I get out, I was encouraged because there was a young black man standing there having a conversation with the security guard and they was laughing and talking and they was going at it. And as I was passing by, I kind of figured out that they were talking about firearms. They were talking about guns. Okay, so I go in, I make my purchase, I come back out and when I get back out, by this time, the brother and the cop, they're really laughing and talking crazy. And he goes to his trunk, and this brother reaches in his trunk and pulls out an AK-47. Standing up there talking to the security guard. Wow. Right? And then, he, he said, yeah, man, I had to get me one. I had to get me one, right? And then, you know what he did? He took that AK-47, and he put it down in his shorts. He didn't have on nothing but some shorts. And he stuck that AK-47 down in his shorts, and then he walked into the convenience store. Oh, no. Run! I did run! I was hurrying up trying to get in my car. Because I'm like saying, the last thing I want to do is be in a convenience store with a dude in there with an AK-47. And I ain't got nothing. And then he's talking with the police, and they laughing about it. I'm looking at the police guy. You let him walk in the store with an AK-47? But he was a young brother. See, there are conversations we need to have. See, really? Wrong is right. Don't you know that sin is a reproach for any people? Yes, sir. Righteousness exhausts the nation. Yep. So if you really want to make America great, let's live for God. Right. You, if you really want to lift up the black race, let's live for God. Let's walk it out. Let's not just come and talk, church. Let's not just get theory in our mind. Let's put sin theory with action, and let's walk it out. See, if you really want to exalt a nation, we can make a change. But hate ain't going to do it. You know, that's what Thug Life was all about. The hate you give. Right. Don't go there. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care what they do. They ain't getting no hate out of me. Yes, sir. Can't go there. That's a conscious decision. Yes, sir. Ain't nothing about being a punk. It's about living for God. Yes, sir. And, and as you live for God, or as we live for God, that's what brings people out of darkness into the light. Because now in a dark world, we are making a difference. My life looks different from the life of the other guy. Not because I'm anything special other than the blood and the life of Jesus Christ living inside of me. And when they ask me, how did I get by? That's my opportunity to testify about how good God is. Yes. How he made a way for me. Yes, how he kept me as a young boy when black kids were coming up missing. I grew up in the dirty south. And I can tell you of many instances where people got killed. Yes, sir. All right, all right. Just because of their race. Right. You know? And, and it hurts. Yeah. It's confusing. As a child, you figure, how do I fit in all of this? Right. Am I next? What do I have to do to make this not happen to me? Yeah. You know, if I get enough money, do they respect me then? Nope. Right. Because it's sin in our lives. Yeah. God want to change that. And when we have that real honest conversation about God, will you fix me? Hallelujah. See, when he said that unless you repent, you're going to perish too. Now you can sit back talking trash on the police if you want them, but if you got that same hate in your heart, you and the police will be sitting side by side in hell. Oh yeah, cause God is no respect to a person. Sin is sin in God's eyesight. I, I don't care what color you is, or part of my bad English, but it's just the accent, the truth. It don't matter. God is the righteous judge. 
And while we have a chance, the theme for men for this month is last chance. Now, I don't know if it's your last year, but I can tell you this. We closer to the day of his return now than ever before in history. And you know what? The Bible says, blessed is he that when his master comes, find him doing what he asked him to do. If God gave the work for you to do, and he come and get you today, and you in the, you you at you down at the boat, or, or or you in some other shady spot, and you ain't doing your work, you know what? The sin may not necessarily be what you're doing; it's what you're not doing. Sin of omission is big. If God told you to be in one place, look at it. The Bible says at the time when kings were supposed to go off to war, David stayed home. He wasn't where he was supposed to be. And you know what? He wrecked his family for the rest of his life. That sin played out in his family. So when we as men are not where we're supposed to be, when we're not in our proper space, when we're not leading in the word of God, when we're not taking our family into prayer, when we're not holding up a standard yes, that sir. they're not going to like you for. Yes, sir. You know, sometimes they look at me like I'm a dog and I'm saying, okay, if I'm going to be a dog, I'm going to be a rock water. I'm not going to be no chihuahua. Right. <laughs> ain't going to be no poodle, no yes, sniff sir. sniff. No, if I got to be a dog about that, then we going to dog it out. Because we got to walk where right God said, whoa, yeah. I want my family to be blessed. Yeah. And sometimes that means restraining us from us. Yeah. And right now I'm saying that even as we're opening up, some of us need to put on some restraint. Yeah. Be careful where you go. Yeah. Be careful who you hang out with. Be careful what you're doing. Don't be ashamed to put your mask on. I walked into places with my mask in my pocket and didn't put it on because didn't nobody else have it on. Now how foolish is that? I've done it too. I've done it too. How foolish is that? Yes. I walk up out of there with Corona and people in my house die. I'll be sick, sad for forever. Never get old. Never get old. Because I wouldn't apply the blood. What you talking about, Corona? We got a chance to have eternity with God. Knowing that calamity and death is coming. If you didn't think it was coming, that extra hundred and some thousand people dying suddenly should shake you up. Because yeah. you know the regular death rate is still going on too. Yeah. We still killing people. We still got people dying from cancer. We still got people dying from car wrecks. We still got people drowning. We still got people having heart attacks. All of this. But that extra hundred and some thousand Mercy. should shake you up. Come on now. Should make you understand that life ain't promised to me. Many healthy people are gone. Right. It's almost like Thanos in, in the Marvel thing. He snapped his finger and I'm wondering who coming back. Right. Because that's going to be the big thing. You know, people, we want to get back to, to normal. They're, we're not going back to normal. It's a new normal now. We can start referring to it as post-corona or whatever we come up with, whatever catchy phrase. But ain't no more going back to, 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 don't you know this time next year, people will still be walking around in masks. Because yeah. death's still going to be walking. Right. Even with a vaccine, death's still going to be walking. So, here's the wrap up. If you know you're going to die, and you know you can't buy your way into heaven, and irregardless to what people would tell you, the problem solution provided by God was his son. Yeah. I was talking to a lady who said she went to, to Judaism because she liked the idea that they got healing for the nation. And I smiled at her because I know that she was a Christian before, so she left the solution to go and talk about the theory. Right. See, because God said, through all the world, through my seed, all the world will be blessed. Yes, sir. That seed is Jesus Christ. He is the one who paid the penalty for your sins and for mine. Come on now. But if you're afraid to put on the mask, because you don't want people to talk about you, uh, you want to act like you can uh, navigate corona and all this death and none of it get on you, you know, then... 
Is it a tragedy if you die? Right. Yes. That's a serious thing to consider. Because right. my mother thought that if I build my house in the middle of the highway and I end up getting run over by a truck, was that really a tragedy? Right. A tragedy in my planning? A tragedy in my awareness? A tragedy in my application of wisdom in my life? God has put the ultimate sacrifice before us in the death of his son on Calvary, who died willingly in our place, even though he knew he had committed no sin. Boy, if somebody accused you of something you know you didn't do, you'll be screaming bloody murder. You want Johnny Cochran and everybody else to come and represent you. Perry Mason and Matt Lock and all the rest of them. I want them to come get me off. <laughs> Him too. But God said, I'll die for them. I love them that much that I'll die for them. And you know what? He died for you, willingly. But he left it at a place where we have to accept him. So if it's in your heart right now, and, and even beyond that, if you've already accepted Jesus, but you know that you your life is ragged, you, you know you got some so much hidden stuff that you, ain't no room for no fruit. Now is the time for us to call out and cry out to God and ask Him. Thank Him for another opportunity. Ask Him to give us a heart of service that we would appreciate what He's done to such a level that He becomes ultimately important in our life. Well, we can honestly say that that's my primary relationship. Above God, the one thing I don't want to give up, you know, I mean, we got family, loved ones, and all this stuff, friends, some of us got our road dog that we ain't going to give up no matter what. But our road dog is corrupt. Every time I'm with him, I'm doing some stuff I know I ain't got no business doing. You might want to switch your road dog. Or switch your road. Because you're on the wrong road. There is a way that seems right unto man. But the Bible says the end thereof is death. Why should you die? Right. God is calling for us to repent. So in this moment, if I never get to say anything to you again, I just want to say, if you're outside of the ark of God, please repent. Right. And, and if somebody told you you can get to God without repenting, they're lying to you. Right. That's like they're telling you that you can get to Chicago if you keep going south. <laughs> you ain't going to get to Chicago. Because even if you try to go all the way around the world, you can't drive across that water. Right. So you're not going to get there like that. God has given his son who is the perpetuation for our sins. Big old $3 word, that means he's satisfied it right down to the penny. It's an accounting term. He settled my debt with God all the way down to the last grunion. I owe him nothing but love and service. To walk humbly before him, to love mercy, and to do right for his sake. Is there anybody out here who love my God like that?